weather remains frightful, but the calendar now says March. Time to start the madness. The Wolverines hoping they can march to their first conference title in 28 years, while the Gophers are still right on the bubble in hopes of an invite to the big dance. Gophers and Wolverines next. Center in Ann Arbor is the place to be on a Saturday night. We're expecting a good one here this evening. Basketball on BTN is presented by Five Hour Energy. We've got a rematch of a game that was played exactly eight weeks ago. The surging Minnesota Golden Gophers taking on the 16th ranked Michigan Wolverines. And wow, we have news for you. Just moments ago, right down the road, Michigan State losing against Illinois. That means they now have five conference losses to the Spartans and Michigan with only three. With a win tonight, they could clinch at least a share of the Big Ten regular season title. So glad to have you along for the ride. Alongside my partner, Jim Jackson, I'm Eric Collins. Obviously a lot on the line for Michigan, but also a lot on the line for this Minnesota team. Well, I take my hat off to the schedule makers knowing that this game would have implications for both teams. But for Michigan, you talked about it, an outright championship. You don't want to let it go at this point of the season. You work too hard. And for Minnesota, you're fighting, scratching, clawing for your NCAA tournament lives. This is a game that gives you that poker chip that you need going into the tournament. It's kind of hard to believe, but uh, Michigan, they haven't won an outright Big Ten regular season title since 1986. It's been a while. It's been a while, but in order for them to do this, they have to start the game, begin the game better. They get bit when they played with fire against Wisconsin, but got away with it with Michigan State and also Purdue on the road. They can't allow themselves to get down early, get into that deficit against this Minnesota team because they're hungry. And speaking about Minnesota, I called the game against Iowa. Austin Hollis, 27 point. He made his first shot. It was the energy, the effort, the way he played offensively and defensively. Does he have to duplicate those same numbers? No, but he does. It. You saw that right there, that energy. Duplicate that energy. Gophers coming off a game in which they scored 95 points. They are red hot. Let's do this. Our tip in a moment. We've got Gophers and Wolverines from Ann Arbor. Energy. Focus is the feeling of clarity and alertness. It's the feeling you get from Five Hour Energy. And by State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. And by MFS Investment Management. Innovative solutions for investors and their professional advisors. Welcome back, everyone. The Chrysler Center here in Ann Arbor should be a packed house. Second and final regular season meeting between the Gophers and the Wolverines. Michigan winning on the road back January 2nd at Williams Arena. Let's take a look at our Buffalo Wild Wings starting lineup. First, the homestanding Michigan Wolverines. Eric, for me, what stands out the play of Gary Savert over his last four or five games averaging 16.9 points, 6.1 rebounds, a facilitator, a score. Important that he get off early for the Wolverines. And what about the visitors from Minneapolis? Well, here it is. DeAndre Matthew, the first game, he had five turnovers. He has to take care of the basketball. You don't want to turn it over. That's what got Minnesota in trouble up there when they had the game under control. This Michigan team loves to run at home. Well, we uh, had the whole gamut here in terms of experience from head coaches. We've got Richard Patino's first season with the Gophers, second season as a head man, spent last year at Floyd International. And then you got the veteran. There's John oh, Beeline now in his seventh time. season time with Michigan. And he's going great guns. Now 50 games Let's over 500 go. during his tenure here in Ann Arbor. Opening cap, Morgan and Eliason battling. And it'll be Wolverine basketball. Very important we see defensively how Michigan begins this game. This is where they've gotten themselves in trouble uh, as of late, getting down early in the first half. Michigan was down 19 points in the first half of Wednesday's game at Purdue. Using a lot of shot clock to begin this game. Derek Walton Jr., freshman weaves in, finds Levert. He's going to have to fire, hand in the face. Rebounded by Eliason. And let's see if the uh, offense for the Gophers has traveled from Minneapolis. 95 points on Tuesday against Iowa. 
So far, so good. And that's how you want to start the game on the road. You want to kind of establish yourself early with Elliott Elias and inside. That draws the defense in, and now you get an easy two. And think about it from the jump shooting perspective. For Minnesota, it's all about rhythm jump shots. Not off the dribble. Dribble drive, penetrate, catch, and shoot. That's when the Gophers are highly effective. Stauskas in the corner. That's a three-pointer. Stauskas didn't have that long-range game going against Purdue, but he's off to a good start. Well, good start for Michigan, bad sign for Minnesota. Talking to the assistant coach at Minnesota, Kamani Young, one thing they wanted to do was control the three-point line and run Michigan off that time. Not a good time isolating and finding Nick Stauskas in the corner. Andre Holland hits the back of the iron, and Walton wants to run. Already this afternoon, a, a shocker over in East Lansing, Michigan State losing against Illinois. Is it a correlation that Brandon Dawson returned to the lineup? You know, you have to make adjustments. This time, Robinson doesn't get the roll. Joey King wants it. Instead, they'll work it around the perimeter. In that Iowa game, this Minnesota team was patient at the beginning of the game. Had a lot of deflections. That's another area defensively. They want to be active, kind of disrupting the flow for Michigan. Lyson gets his own miss, takes his time, and scores. He's got both buckets for the Gophers. Inside presence. That's something that Minnesota wants to dominate in the first game. They were able to win the points in the paint 32-26. So that's the key also for Minnesota working inside out. Levert is fouled by DeAndre Matthew. I talked about this. Defending the three-point line. This is one of the better shooters in the country. How is he wide open and no one is there? Okay, that's communication on the back line. And for Minnesota, if you're going to lose somebody, you can't lose Nick Stout. Levert finds Stauskas again. This time, Stauskas penetrates his pass off the fingertips to Morgan, picked up by Walton. Walton in the scoring column. Austin Hollins, 27 points against Iowa. He made eight of 10 shots in the field and all seven free throws. This is King, rebounded by Walton. Pull up, Stauskas. Austin Hollins, great stutter step, comes up short on the layup. But King keeps the possession alive. Morgan hits the deck. Lavert in transition. Andre Collins, three pointer for the junior from Memphis. One in, Michigan shoots a quick three. It allows now Minnesota the opportunity to have a mismatch in the backcourt. And you get into the hands of Andre Hollins, he's known to knock down that shot in transition. Four minutes and 45 seconds. Robinson misses everything. He'll be forgiven. He hit the game winner in overtime on Wednesday at Purdue. Timeout on the floor. Just getting started. Gophers with a two-point lead. Michigan trailing Minnesota. 7-5 early in this one. Our quick and loans amazing performance takes us to Purdue on Wednesday evening. Robinson along the baseline. in the third making it happen with his dad watching of course his dad a Purdue alum a Purdue legend 
And he comes to Mackey Arena and wins it in overtime. The beauty about that play, Eric, was two things. One, the team executed the play to perfection out of timeout. But second, it was the pass. The pass was close and caught by the, by the out-of-bounds line. If it's on his inside hand, okay, closer to the rim, I mean the outside, he doesn't have the drive to the baseline. He has to then go to the middle where it's crowded. So two very good things happened on that play allowed them to win that game. Everyone in Mackey Arena thinking that Nick Stauskas was going to be the focus of that game-ending play. Instead, John Beeline trusts Glenn Robinson. Charles Bucks into the game. Shot clocked out of five. Eliason is going to be called for hooking John Horford. So a foul on Eliason. Changes to tell you about for both sides. John Horford, Spike Albrecht, and Zach Irvin have now checked into the game for the Maize and Blue. For Minnesota, Charles Bucks is the first sub off the bench. Bucks playing 19 minutes, scoring 13 points. Well, Last time out against but, but Iowa. Anyway, here's the thing. He acted like he'd been there before. I mean, when he came in the game, you see Stiles is coming off for the pick and an offensive rebound. Charles Bucks, for someone who hasn't played, but calm, comfortable. He didn't force anything. He took shots within the offense, and he was very, very confident. It was, it was unbelievable, man. It was, it was a beauty to watch, man. <laughs> There's Irvin. He made five three-pointers in the win up in Minneapolis January 2nd. Matthews pass ripped away by Oliver. Albrecht left alone. Decides not to take the shot. But that was excellent transition defense that time by Minnesota by closing off a lot of the driving lanes that Michigan loves to get you baited into. Then you can kick it out for a three. Wild shot by Lavert. Michigan has yet to even take a shot in the paint. And that's the only issue I have sometimes with this Michigan team. Because you have the freedom to look and take three-point shots, you kind of fall in love with it at times instead of doing this. Hitting the ball inside, forcing the defense to concentrate on that. And once you do that, those three-point shots are going to open up. But it's called patience. You know, a lot of times you want to take the first available shot instead of working it around. When this Michigan team does that, they're impossible to stop because they have so many options. We played seven minutes. And Elliot Eliason is outscoring Michigan. He's got six of the nine points for the Gopher. Levert finds Irvin. Michigan now one for seven from deep. Then I'll take that shot. As you see Andre Holland on the baseline with a little pull-up because it was off of dribble drive penetration. So that's a shot that Michigan can knock down high frequency. There's the first shot in the paint, and it's a layup for Karis LeVert. And that time, no one from Minnesota communicated. Someone has to say, I have ball. No one did that. A smart Karis LeVert maintained this dribble off the attack and easy to in transition. Dump down, Austin Hollins able to put it in. Hollins coming off a game in which he scored 27 points, a career high for him against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hey, we talked about Michigan starting off slow. Well, this Minnesota team has started off quick, has started off quickly against Ohio State, against Iowa, and then allowed the opposing team back in. Can Minnesota continue with the pace and concentration to maintain the lead to, in order to win the game? Stauskas. Long rebound, Matthew. Look at the Jets on this kid. Finds Hollins. Now Albrecht the other way. Doesn't have numbers. Three-pointer, Irvin. Great hustle by the Gophers. Three on two. No basket before. On the pass, it's going to be a foul on Spike Albrecht. Good start for Elliot Eliason. He averages five points per game. He's already surpassed that with a half dozen. Terris LeVert taking it to the hole. 11-7, Gophers. Welcome back, everyone. 11-22 remaining here in our first half with Jim Jackson. I'm Eric Collins. Gophers on the road on top of Michigan by four. But the huge story so far in the conference happening in East Lansing, Illinois beating Michigan State. As we take a look at the All-State Insurance Mayhem Index, the remaining schedules for both the Wolverines and the Spartans. 
at Illinois and home against Indiana for Michigan on the road or at home against Iowa and on the road against Ohio State for Michigan State what a shocker in East Lansing that means it's now five conference losses for the Spartans just three for Michigan a win today and they get at least a share of the Big Ten regular season title. You're a big movie fan, right? Oh, yeah. Remember the movie Life? I do. I can't get right. <laughs> yeah, that's Mich Michigan State. It's, it's one thing after another. And when Dawson comes back, Adrian Payne hurts his shoulder. I mean, it's unbelievable what, they have to, what they've been through as far as injuries this year. Gary Harris missing time. Keep Appling missing time. Daquan McNeil just checked into the game and scored. Well, two things. When you're on the road, it's a couple components you want if you want to walk out with a victory. One, you take care of the basketball. Minnesota has done that. Two, let your offense dictate your defense, which means you take high percentage shot, not a long jump, not a jump shot, you get the ball to the basket. That's something Minnesota has done to perfection early in this game, and that's why they maintain a six-point lead. Michigan playing with five starters, while Minnesota has four subs in the game. Jordan Morgan scored the goal, and he's fouled. And the difference is, in that Purdue game, first half, a lot of jump shots. Right at the beginning of the second half, I'm sure the coach b line told his team, attack. Out of this timeout right here, you see Glenn Robinson Jr. put the ball on the floor. I mean, you can, you can, yeah. GR3 put the, put the ball on the deck. Okay, a difference in philosophy. That's what that's what you can do. You have multiple players who can beat guys off the dribble. Why set? Malik Smith has the ball on the wing. His first touch. Tough catch, Maurice Walker. Now backing in with the left hand, throws it up and in. And I mentioned this in the Ohio State for Minnesota. That's easy. Bring a guy off the screen. The post player gets deep post position. You drop it down, two dribbles, you get a shot. It's easy. So then you go away from it because it's easy. Instead of milking that. Look at Robinson to hang in the air. He puts so much pressure on the defense with his athleticism, his aggressive nature when he attacks. He, to me, he lets a lot of defenders off the hook when he just settles for long contested jump shot. Gophers have 15 points. 12 of them have come in the paint. This pass slips off the fingertips of McNeil. That's now four turnovers for Minnesota. The enigma here is which Glenn Robinson III will show up. Is it this one or the one that kind of settled? The last few games in particular, he's played extremely well. And I think he's more comfortable with being the third wheel. A lot of the pressure is not on him to carry the team. I think Karis LeVert stepping up kind of took that who's the second player that will score role. And Glenn can kind of just ease into his role, but he has superstar potential. And I think that's what teases everybody, and that's why we all expect a lot more because we see it in him. Spike Albrecht back into the game. This is Albrecht with the ball. So it's a small backcourt with Albrecht and Walton working together. Walton steps into a three. Go for lead is just one. Now, how big is that? His first shot, there, knocks it in. Second, knocks it in. Because just over the last six contests, only averaging six and a half points a game. Down from about, you know, ten points his first uh, nine games in the Big Ten. So, huge shots for Derek Walton. Good catch by Walker. Bodies flying around an offensive foul. Turnover gives it back over to the Wolverines. And Coach Patino can live with that foul. It's an aggressive foul, an aggressive play that time by Mo Walker, but just that little, el I mean, shoulder into the chest of Morgan calls the foul. Morgan in excellent defensive position, but I'll take that foul for my big man any day. Even if it's number two on well, Walker. If it, well, if it's number two, you want to tell him to be smart. I'm talking about the aggressive nature of that foul, but he has to be smarter not to get it. Walker on the bench with two personal fouls. Elliot Eliason already six points. He places it. Stauskas. Oh, great low. Take one way with the other and finishes with strength. Wolverines working with the lead right now. 
Malik Smith high arcing three comes up short. Robinson walled off by Joey King. Last two minutes, Michigan running off a seven-zip score. Morgan wasn't expecting the pass. He traveled. Timeout on the floor. John Beeline's team, they've got the lead, but it's only by a point. This week, the Journey Big Ten Basketball 2014 features Michigan's Derek Walton Jr. Also involved in the show, you got Iowa's head coach Fran McCaffrey and Rock and Roll Hall of Famer and Indiana basketball fan John Mellencamp. Catch the new episode that's tonight, immediately following our game right here on BTN. Derek Walton, a real interesting story. Tremendous high school player in the Detroit area, played for his father. Don't want to give too much away. This guy is a lot of different things, and it's not just revolving around the basketball court. I think it goes back to the success that Coach Beeline has been able to have. Now he's getting to see an offensive foul that time by Austin Hollins. I said this before. Because of his success, now he's taking a little bit of steam away from um, Tom Izzo. Coach Izzo, you're getting some of the better players in Indiana, getting some out of Ohio now, and you're getting the players in Michigan to stay here in Michigan instead of going elsewhere. So that just tells you a, a little indication of the, what success and how Beeline has kind of turned the tables a little bit versus their in-state rival in regards to the crew. Mike Albrecht, Derek Walton, Karis LeBert, Glenn Robinson, Jordan Morgan, five on the floor for Michigan. Walton. Rebounded by King. Yeah, good relocation that time into the sight path of Spike Albrecht. Derek Walton able to get a good look. Where's the offense gone for Minnesota? They haven't scored in the last four minutes. Yeah, excellent double team that time by Jordan Morgan. A little push underneath by Derek Walton, but uh, you're right. A little bit out of sorts for Minnesota right now. This is the issue they have at times. They'll go through those periods where they have those scoring drives. And then it affects them defensively, and that's how teams end up getting back in the game. Andre Hollins back in for Minnesota. Nick Stauskas back in for Michigan. He replaces Derek Walton. Contact, he'll go to the free throw line. I was just about to say, Michigan has done an excellent job of keeping DeAndre Matthew out of the lane, but something told me to hesitate until after this play. But this young man, despite his stature, yeah, he's, he's, he's a small guy. 5'9". Yeah, okay, 5'9", and we're going to give you a little bit, okay? But his ability to get low, to get by his initial def defender and get to the rim before the help comes. That's so important. And then when the help comes, as you see, he can absorb or initiate the contact and still have a chance for a three-point play. 19 points, seven assists for DeAndre Matthew against Iowa earlier this week. We're tied at 16. 6.20 remaining in our first half. Michigan trying to sweep the season series. In Minneapolis, January 2nd, one by three. Robinson, long two-pointer. And that's a play right there. You usually see Nick Stauskas run. You catch it on the left elbow. A quick pitch and roll for a pull-up jump shot. I thought John Beeline dialed that play to get GR3 a nice look at the basket, able to knock it in. King lost it. Last touch by King. Went off of his foot. Now we may have a, a change on that ruling. Freeze it. And we do have a change. We're going to keep it with Minnesota. Minnesota. 
So the Gophers still have the ball down by two. Shot clock doesn't reset. It's down to six right now. Matthew forces it up, just hoping that maybe Eliason could get a rebound. Michigan trying to get to 13 and 3 since so through 16 conference games. All Brecht. John Horford going to come in. You talked to John Beeline before the game. And you asked him why his team has been starting slowly in recent games. And he said he don't know. He said he's trying to do everything in practice to get them out of it. And again, it's a mindset, too. Knowing that the position you're in in Michigan, everybody's going to give you their best shot. In particular, right at the beginning of the game. And you have to be ready for that offensively, but more importantly, Eric, defensively. Even if you're not making shots, if you're honed in defensively, that gives you a chance to kind of hang around. Robinson bodies up against King. Now double team. Levert lost it. Numbers for Minnesota, four on two, and it's all for naught. Michigan ball. And that was excellent weak side rotation that time by DeAndre Matthew by stepping in, not staying attached to his man, dropping down and getting the pass. But again, one of those turnovers that haunts Minnesota. When you got a chance to score, to get back in the game, you end up turning it over. And that's something that Coach Patino has talked to his team about in particular when you're on the road. Stauskas has it slapped away. Again, numbers for Minnesota. Andre Holland blocked by Robinson. That's how you stop a three-on-one. Stauskas. Big swing for the Wolverines. <laughs> this team can make you pay when you don't check up in full court from behind the arc. Eliason oh. is fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. Now defense and offense frequently go hand in hand. How about Glenn Robinson with the defense? That will spark the offense of Nick Stauskas. Largest lead of the day, Michigan up by five. Welcome back, everyone. Here's the MFS Inside the Numbers on Tuesday against Iowa. 95 points scored. That was just in regulation. There wasn't even overtime. Most in a Big Ten game in 21 years. They shot 61%, making 11 three-pointers. What a difference four days make. Offense hadn't been here so far against Michigan on a Saturday evening. And, and what does that say? Does that say Minnesota off the charts offensively or Iowa, which is my concern, is their defense because they come back and give up 93 points against an Indiana team. <laughs> so if you're looking at it from Minnesota's perspective, hey, we shot the lights out. Okay, will that happen all the time? I don't know. But if, it's, if you're Iowa and fans of Iowa, you're scratching your head right now. Well, hold on. Fran McCaffrey, after the game on Tuesday, said, you know what? Our defense wasn't that bad. We just got to tip our caps to what Richard Patino's team did against us. Let me tell you something. 95 points, <laughs> and you give up 93 the next game, something's not okay. right. For that team, because I think defensively, you see a steal right now, and you're not going to stop this guy in transition. Wild shot with the left hand doesn't fall. King the rebound. He lost it out of bounds. It's still Minnesota's ball. To finish that on Iowa, they're so long, I think at times in their zone defense, they don't play big. Arms are down. So teams are shooting a better percentage against him than I think they should be just because of the length they possess, and particularly on the wing. Gophers are desperate right now. Their offense on life support. And Eliason, one of the captains, takes it upon himself. He's got eight of the 18 points for Minnesota. Maturation of the post play. A couple years ago, last year, I don't know if he'd have been that comfortable putting the ball on the deck and making that move. But this year, you see a different Elliot Elias in credit 
the Minnesota coaching staff for really pushing him to become better offensively. Karis LeVert answers with a triple. And Richard Patino, none too pleased, has to call a timeout. Minnesota, they would love to get a win. They're in trouble right now. So what do you think? You're going to take it? Look, it's over, Brooklyn. Brooklyn? Dude, you got to get in on this. 140 characters, I don't get it. Do you get it now? Sir. Sir. Huh? Yeah, I'll take it. Don't let it pass you by. The BMW 3 Series, the ultimate driving machine. Visit your local BMW center for exceptional offers. 2.37 remaining in our first half. Stay tuned at the half. We'll have a State Farm halftime report. Full house. Dave Revson, Steve Smith, Mike DeCourcy. Ready and waiting to talk about this one. They'll also talk about Michigan State and Illinois. A shocker from the Breslin Center. But I mean, you address Mike DeCourcy. We Hall almost put in there Hall of Famer. <laughs> Mike DeCourcy. <laughs> Andre Holland has it run off the lip. Jordan Morgan, the baseball pass. That's why he plays basketball, not baseball. He didn't tuck his shoulder in and elbow. That's why the pass kind of got away from him and floated on him. Nose down, nose down. <laughs> Interesting stat here. Minnesota, 14 out of their 18 points. Guess where? In the game. Inside. Michigan, 12 of their 24 behind a three-point line. You know, both teams kind of getting what they want. Unfortunately for Minnesota, when you had momentum, defensively you kind of slacked off a little bit. You know the home team is going to make a run. Can they finish off these last two minutes, cut the deficit, or take the lead? I don't know. Almost a turnover. Eliason runs it down, and he's fouled by Albrecht. Michigan foul on two spike Albrecht. Second foul on second number team. two. Derek Walton Jr. is going to replace Albrecht, who goes to the bench with those two fouls. Neither team in the bonus. Five team fouls for both the Wolverines and the Gophers. Well, this, this Michigan team doesn't foul I mean, teams are only averaging about 15, 15.3 free throws a game. That means you're playing defense without fouls. Big chance Andre Hollins hits it. That's what he's been doing for the last three years. They're going to say he's excellent on the line. That's a long two-pointer. Long two-pointer, but he, he, he should go by and pack DeAndre Matthews for that, too, because that deep penetration drew in the defense, knowing that he can finish. So now he makes a correct play out to Andre Holland for a long two. Under a minute and a half to play in our first half. Run! Offensive rebound, Austin Holland. And it's going to be Michigan ball with a full head of steam. A little alley-oop right here. Charles Bugs got beat back door. Welcome to big time, young fella. DeAndre Matthew kind of caught a little bit underneath. You know, that, that may be on my top dunks of the year right there. I think I might put, because it was over two people, so... My man, Corey Waller, who puts this together for me. Mark that down. Check we'll that one down. Check that down. We might keep that in our archive just in case. Under a minute to play first half. Michigan on top of Minnesota by a half dozen. Walton to Robinson. Robinson working against Bugs. Stauskas. Three-pointer for the junior. And what a way to end a half. Michigan, a 
ball had a confidence heading into the locker room. Halftime score for Ann Arbor, 31-20. Now let's send it to the studio for the State Farm Halftime Report. Getting ready for our second half to get underway. Before we do, let's take a look at our five-hour energy first half stats. The goal for shooting just 38% after shooting 61% against Iowa. Yeah, and right here, if you look at one for seven from the three-point line, they were 11 for 19. That kept them in the game. That kept momentum going. Not able to do it. Seven turnovers, okay, against Iowa or against Michigan this last when they played early. Michigan had 16 points off of those turn 15 turnovers. Minnesota only had 13. It's a three-point game that Michigan won. So that tells you how important it is in those little stats like that to take care of the basketball, in particular in low possession and low-scoring game at times. It's critical to get shots at the rim. Austin Hollins limited to just two points in the first half. Throws this one in. Good start for the visitors to begin the second half. But Austin Hollins can do that a lot. Here. I think a lot of times he will settle at times just for a jump shot. He's long. He's athletic. He has the ability to put it on the floor. And sometimes I think he limits himself to just settling for jump shots. But when he's, a, when he's attacking the rim, he's as good as anybody in the league at getting there and also finishing. Stauskas, Walton. Levert, Morgan, and Robinson. Shot missed by Walton. Off the thumbs of Jordan Morgan. John Beeline's team, I'm sure, they know that Michigan State has already lost earlier today. Focus. It's not about the other teams. It's about you being Michigan. Finishing out the season the rest of them in the way you need to finish it out. And let the chips fall where it may for the other team. King comes up short. A win tonight in Michigan assures himself of a piece of the Big Ten regular season title. Levert pull up. Elbow extended. Hit it. Tough shot for the sophomore from Columbus, Ohio. Minnesota had 51 points at the half against Iowa on Tuesday. They're going to have a hard time getting to 51 in 40 minutes tonight. And we've got a foul along the baseline. That's going to be number two on Jordan Morgan. I think the thing that Minnesota that voted well for Minnesota against Iowa was one, they were able to get out and run to finish against a defense that's not set. Michigan is doing an excellent job of loading back in and keeping Minnesota out of the lane, getting those easy lifts. Now, again, early in the game, we saw Eliasson kind of establishing himself, but Minnesota or Michigan made the adjustment to kind of take that away. Stolen away by Austin Hollins. He's got Robinson on his tail, and uh, no one's going to stop that freight train. Four second-half points for Austin Hollins. Active hands. That's why Minnesota leads the league in steals is because they're in proper position, first of all, but the anticipation of where the pass is coming from has been the key for Minnesota defensively. Stowski is able to draw the foul. Earlier today at shoot-around, Richard Pitino was preaching to these Gophers. Deflections. Deflections. That's going to be the most important thing. If we set our season high in deflections tonight, we'll win. That was his exact statement. Hey, you may not always get the steal. As you see, a out of bounds play here for Paris Levert for the three. You may not get the steal, but you force Michigan to reset their offense. Okay, you disrupt the flow a little bit. And that's the beauty of when you have a team that has high deflections. Pretty much a really good defensive team at that. Now, kiss. His pass too quick. Morgan can't handle it. Three on two. Matthew scores at the rim. And, and Morgan was anticipating the Stouts as was going up for the shot. Too close of a quarter to kind of make that play happen. And Minnesota smartly, you get it up quick, you make Michigan pay for a live ball turnover. A lot of really smart people think that right now, Minnesota is in the NCAA tournament on the right side of the bubble. How devastating would a loss be tonight against Michigan? Oh, did you see the foul right there? Hollins, well, it's a little bit different because this is a road game against a top-tier team. It doesn't hurt as much. If this was 
you know, Penn State or somewhere else. That's really what hurt them. Okay, Minnesota still has work to do, even if they win this game. I think for them, the mindset has to be win out, win as many games as we can in the tournament, tournament, Big Ten tournament. Let's eliminate anything funny happening on Selection Sunday, okay? Let's, let's do that. So they also have to finish this season handling their business. How about this for a kooky stat? If Minnesota loses tonight, that will be their 10th conference loss. They'll be 7-10 and 10 with one more conference game remaining. In the history of the NCAA tournament, only twice, oh, check that, only once has a team in back-to-back -back seasons been below 500 in conference and made it to the NCAA tournament. That was Virginia back in 1990 and 91. The only time the team has made it two years in a row. Last year, Minnesota made it to the big dance with a losing conference record. And I think a lot of that goes back to one who they beat, but also the strength of the conference. Okay, that bodes well. Think about Virginia and ACC in the 90s, very strong in regards to dominance uh, by the ACC, very similar to what here we see with the Big Ten with the number of teams ranked. So, but you don't want to put yourself in that situation. Robinson has it spin out. Gophers down by nine. Austin Holland has it knocked away. He was fouled. Derek Walton called for the grab. Timeout on the floor. Gophers still have a chance, but they need to get the work down by nine. Two other games have already been played around the conference today. The big shocker in East Lansing, Illinois, knocking off Michigan State and doing it convincingly by seven in East Lansing. Northwestern falling out in Lincoln against Nebraska. Javon Shields, a double-double. Here in Ann Arbor, Minnesota in trouble. Richard Pitino's team, they are down by nine. 15-52 remaining. In our second half, let's take a look at the NCAA tournament resume for the Gophers. Well, you talk about the key wins, okay? Wisconsin, Ohio State, Iowa. You see the strength of schedule six, the RPI. But it's those two losses, Northwestern at home, at Purdue. That's tough. This game, I don't think it weighs as heavy because, it, again, it is Michigan. But a Penn State loss, oh, you forget about it. I mean, you, you have to win that game, and you have to win some games in the, in the Big Ten tournament. So still have the work cut out for them. Had to finish off this one. A lot of time left in this game, Eric, as we've seen this year. Teams finding a way on the road in particular to come back and win. Both teams playing with their starting five on the floor. Matthew starting to heat up a little bit. He's got four second-half points. DeAndre Matthew can get that shot. If he can knock that down with consistency, it's tough to stop. Because once he, get a he gets his shoulder by you, and that first step, you're not going to catch up. And sometimes he over penetrates to try to get in, but that's a little in between shot that if he gets comfortable making, he will really be tough to stop. Garris Levert, extra pass over to Walton. Long two pointer for Walton. No, it's a three pointer. Derek Walton's shooting stroke. It's been there for the majority of the season. It'll stay with Minnesota. Yeah, it's such an unselfish Michigan team. When the ball is hopping like that and you have a defender trailing and somebody has to help, a quick pass is you never can recover. And that's when Michigan is really at their best, when the ball is hopping across the court, keeping the defense at a disadvantage. Mo Walker checks into the game. He was limited in the first half with two personal fouls. Scoop shot up and in. <laughs> Michigan trying to get to 13 and 3 with only games remaining against Illinois and Indiana in the regular season. How about the Illini kind of feeling good about themselves right now, playing good basketball? Oh. Tipped out of bounds in the state with Michigan. It's a three-game winning streak for the Illini. Well, you take uh, think about Nebraska. Ohio State loses, Iowa loses. If Nebraska wins that game against Illinois, they put themselves in a really good position in that fourth position, okay? Because those teams are all battling where they were at. Stauskas rattles it in.
Lead back up to 11. Does Tim Miles even have any competition for Coach of the Year? Well, Coach Beeline, definitely. I think the job that Coach Beeline has been able to do without Mitch McGarry. Levert! Rebounded by Matthew. Austin Holland. Now, all of a sudden, the transition starts to work for Minnesota. A transition, they have to get multiple stops. I mean, that's how you get back in the game. One basket, then a stop. A basket, then you get another stop. That's how you begin to be start a run. For Minnesota, that's how you're going to call your way back in this game, is defensively limiting Michigan to one shot and then get it out on your horses and get it out in half court and they feel court and run. Matthew again wants to run. And he's fouled. Derek Walton called for the personal foul. And this is where Minnesota can be extremely good. DeAndre Matthews kind of floating to his right a little bit, opening up driving lane and a passing lane over to Austin Allen, able to get the ball what the defense was attracted to himself. Subs for both sides. Malik Smith into the game now for Minnesota. For Michigan, Zach Irvin comes in, replacing Glenn Robinson. John Beeline also standing in Spike Albrecht and John Horford. And Leak Smith coming in the game is only one for 16. And last in his last few outings, one for 13 from behind the three-point line. A normally a reliable shooter, but just not able to find his touch. Here's Smith inside. Nice pass. Walker powers it in with two hands. Intelligent play that time by Smith, knowing that even though He's missed some shots. They're still going to honor him defensively. A little hesitation pump thing. Now you put it on the deck and you make a play. That's how you can add value to your team when you're struggling, not shooting the ball particularly well. Stoustis. That may have been his most contested shot of the night. It was straight on, but had a hand in his face. Austin Hollins, his first three-pointer. Three Excellent use of the pump fake. Stauskas has to stay disciplined in his defensive position, but Austin able to step right in to a nice little comfortable jump shot. What had once been a halftime deficit of 11 has now been whittled down to just four. Don't give up on these golfers just yet. Kicks it out. And good. He ties it at 56. Well, we're not too far away. Tournament's going to start in two weeks' time. If it started tonight, this is what it would look like. On the right side of your screen, Jim Jackson, those would be your top four seeds getting buys into the quarters. Obviously, Michigan. But look at the four seeds. Nebraska. Oh, my goodness. What you think about it, they hold the tiebreaker against Ohio State because they play one game and they won. Okay? Down they in, split one and one. I mean, split one and one, I'm sorry. But think about Nebraska, how they're going to finish out the season. You got Northwestern, a chance to win another game, but then at home against Wisconsin. So the talk of NCAA implications for Nebraska is still pretty much hanging in the balance as well, even though they're on the outside looking in. But you win those two games, especially Wisconsin. You win some in the conference tournament. Where does that put Nebraska? That's going to be a lot of talking points over the next two weeks. We've got a timeout right now. Richard Patino's Gophers hang it tough. They're only down by four. Big Ten regular season ending in eight days. Michigan, they've got a great chance at winning their first outright regular season title since 1986. Michigan State a loser earlier today. Nebraska a winner. So right now, as it is, Nebraska will have a bye into the quarters. They are a four seat. Still two games remaining for the Nebraska Cornhuskers in their regular season. Take a look at our Reese's perfect combination. Nick Stauskas and Glenn Robinson. We've talked a lot about these guys so far through the first 
27 games for Michigan. Well, these two work extremely well together. And again, Stauskas being unselfish as he is, sets Glenn Robinson a lot up for that alley-oop that we happen to see because so much attention is placed upon Stauskas. Robinson, Albrecht, Stauskas, Morgan, Irvin, the five on the floor for Michigan. Here's Robinson. Kick out to Stauskas. There's that perfect combination. And you notice how much space Stauskas allowed Robinson to work with. He was two or three feet behind the three-point line, okay? That's his range. Instead of crowding Robinson's drive, he gave enough space so if the help came to the foul inside, he would be open for a three. And that's very important. When this Michigan team, they spaced the court a lot like Trayton, okay? Off the double pick and roll, reverse pick and roll. On the dribble drive here, you're going to have to help a little bit. That time, a little too much by Smith allows Stiles just to be open. And coaches say this all the time. I want you to help, but know when your teammate has somebody under control. And that time, I thought Smith helped a little too much, whereas Robinson really didn't have his, hit, his shoulder and feet by his defender. Matthew replaced by Andre Hollins. I love the fact that you pulled a Creighton reference. Oh, yeah. Doug McDermott. I had a, few, I had a few of those games, but they do an excellent <laughs> job. May not be the quickest or most athletic team, but how they beat you is they have multiple three-point shooters and offensive rebounds by Bugs, and they keep you space. Malik Smith, that would have been very big for the Gophers. They're down by six. We've got 11 minutes left to play. That would have been very big for Malik Smith just to see the ball go in from the perimeter. Irvin had five three-pointers. First time these two schools met up in Minneapolis. He's pulled for three so far tonight. And Horford called for the offensive foul. Andre Holland stepping in and taking the charge. And the strength of your team defense is awareness. This time, Andre Hollis, you see him come into the play. He didn't stay married to Spike Albrecht in the corner. Scouting report, knowing that pick and roll was coming, he was in the right position early on in order to take the charge. Jordan Morgan going to replace John Horford. Nick Stouts is going to get a quick breather. He's replaced by Karis LeVert. Wolfers playing with Andre and Austin Hollis, Mo Walker, Charles Bugs, and Malik Smith. Here's Bugs. Freshman coming alive. Bugs has actually never missed a three-pointer in his college career. <laughs> he is five for five. And for the Michigan fans who haven't seen him play, and for some Minnesota fans who haven't seen a lot of them, the coaching staff, and I've seen him, you know, he's a redshirt freshman, but they need their most talented and versatile player. Just the game has just not, ha you know, he hasn't been able to make that adjustment yet, but he looks good. Really comfortable on the court and what he's able to do. Shot blocked down to seven. Albrecht takes a peek. And Albrecht somehow able to sneak by and get a layup. And that's Michigan's first shot in the paint in the second half. How about that? A lot has been regulated to jump shoot, and that's what I'm saying about Michigan. They'll let you get back in the game when they begin to fall in love with long jump shots. But they have the ability with three or four players who can duplicate what Spike Albrecht just did, which is get to the basket. Malik Smith still can't find the ring. It's the guy who made eight three-pointers earlier this year in a game at Nebraska. But he settled. That was a settle shot. You can get that anytime within your offense, okay? And that's a part of the reason why you, you don't develop a rhythm because you take a quick shot and your offensive rebound is not set and ready. Karis Lover, the two-pointer. And Minnesota forced to call timeout. 48-41, Wolverines on top. The Penn State Pitney Lions coming off an impressive season sweep of Ohio State. And then you got Purdue reeling from that last second loss against Michigan, taking on an angry Iowa Hawkeye team. Coverage starts at noon Eastern tomorrow on BTN and BTN to go. How about this? Uh, a lot of predictions have Wisconsin a number two seed 
going into the tournament. Their strength of schedule, I think, is maybe second in the country. I think it is, maybe. But how about the job that Bo Ryan has done with this team kind of turning around after that four-game losing streak? Andre Hollins created space and hits. Big-time move. Three-pointer for the junior Hollins. And that's a big basket. You come out of timeout, you kind of lost momentum to Michigan. You're down six points. What happened? Now you come out and you execute, and your star player makes a tough shot. Now Robinson working on Bugs. This is a fair fight. Bugs goes long arms. Robinson gets him over but comes up empty. And we've got a blocking foul on Levert. First foul on Karis Levert. Andre Hollins. He's got 182 of these. The three-pointer has been his friend over the years. This week, the Journey Big Ten Basketball 2014 features Michigan's super freshman Derek Walton Jr., Iowa's Fran McCaffrey, Rock Roll Hall of Famer and Indiana basketball fan John Mellencamp gets to the new episode tonight, immediately following our game right here on BTN. Here's our Motel 6 sixth man, Charles Bugs. In case you missed it, he had a breakout performance for the ages. He had 13 points on Tuesday. Five or six field goals. He had had all of 21 minutes the entire season coming into that game. Played 19 in the win against the Hawkeyes. Richard Pitino just saying, you know what? He's improved. The time was right. And sometimes you never know where that other guy is going to come from. But that's all about preparation. You don't know. And coaches always say it. You do your part. You work hard because when your time is called, you have to be ready. And that'll be a block on Jordan Morgan. And that important for a number of reasons. It's the third foul on Morgan, but it's the seventh team foul for Michigan. You saw the rest of the way, the bonus for the Gophers. And let's see if Jordan Morgan, to me, he looked like he was in pretty good position to take the charge, okay? Let's see right here in the shoulder end. That's a tough call. And I see why Coach Beeline is not happy. Now you put a team, a very good free throw shooting team, to the line, you know, 722. And if you're Minnesota, what's the mindset? Continue to talk off the dribble, knowing that any foul puts you to the free throw line. Andre Hollins, the greatest free throw shooter in the history of Minnesota basketball. 83% so far in his three-year career. No one's been better for their career as a golfer. All of a sudden, we've got a two-point game. And you know what? Minnesota put themselves in a good situation here. Halftime, second tournament. In the second half up to this point, only one tournament. So that means now you're getting shots at the rim. You're not allowing Michigan to transition that over to point for them. It's a real easy equation. And a foul on Eliason blocking Robinson. <laughs> a little sarcastic cheer from the Michigan faithful. <laughs> In regards to the five. That's just the fourth team foul on Minnesota. So Michigan still a ways away from the bonus. Stauskas over to Morgan. Just that little hesitation by Morgan caused him to miss that shot. He went straight up with it. Maybe he makes it. That would have given Minnesota the lead. Lamar! Eric, long shots produce long rebounds. If you don't have the balance in the backcourt, Michigan will make you pay. And an offensive foul on Charles Buck. You just saw it a moment ago. Our motorist insurance group what drive to the hoop. Karis LeBert, Glenn Robinson, the third. Uh, some people just make plays look easy. This right here to a high-flying Ben Robinson the third is as easy as it gets. Momentum, Wolverine. Tell your guy back in the BTN studios to mark that one too. 
Eh, eh. <laughs> I, I like it, but the other one had bodies up underneath. Okay. Okay. That one was it was good for the crowd, but in the top plays, you got to have a little bit more. I like the fact you got a discerning eye. I got a discerning eye. I mean, that one right there, Eric, you might be able to do that off a trampoline. <laughs> and it looks like that, but, but for my top dunks of the month, yeah, I can still do that. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I have no doubt. I'm not going to be up as high. <laughs> Lead is four for Michigan. Levert can't make mm. seven to Robinson. He's doing everything with his leaping ability. The offensive rebound in the stick back. Well, nobody put a body on. So when you allow an athlete, an athlete like that to get a running start, he's going to win that battle over you every time. Just too much. Lynn Robinson the third. And it's funny, with him, he's a, he's one of those feel-good players. When when the shot is going in, you see the smile on his face. You see his body language dictates what he wants to do. His defense, his rebounding, all of those things picked up. And I think for him, he can't tie his production into making, making or missing shots. He's way too talented for that. It's a lot of things that he can do on this basketball court. That very good, very well, that doesn't involve scoring. Well, registration is now open for the 2014 BTN Big Ten K. Represent your Big Ten school on July 26th in Chicago. The 10K and the 5K races both include a post-race tailgate with mascots, cheerleaders, food, and more. Register today at btnbigtenk.com. They asked me to, if I'm going to run and participate. I said, I'm going to do a Howard Griffin, which is at the end of the race at the... At the finish line, be right there handing out towels and water. <laughs> Just like Howard Griffin. I'd be good at that part of the race. Me and running don't equate anymore. Spin class, stair climber, yeah. Actual running, no. Hurts. Hurts. Joey King. And now Michigan. Another run out. Ball snatched away by Austin Hollins. Albrecht able to pick the pocket of Andre Hollins, but then falls out of bounds. Well, tough pass that time by GR3 to try to thread the needle, but again, active hands by Minnesota. Now you take away a potential, not just two points, but a dunk in transition that excites the crowd. Gophers had cut it to within two. Michigan scored the last four points. Five and a half minutes to play. Michigan trying to sweep the season series from the Gophers. Matthew to Austin Hollins. That's what seniors do. You know the beauty about that play? It was drive, kick, drive, kick, open shot. You always kept the defense one step behind, never able to recover. And that time, you got to know with DeAndre Matthews, you can't rush out on him knowing he's a reluctant three-point shooter. Because if you do that, he gets a step on you. It's over. Levert, hey, and scores! This is a guy who's going to go to a Mac school before he was rescued by John Beeline, and he has turned himself into a big-time player. Well, he got a little taste of success last year. And he worked his tail off this summer to become a better player. And it's obvious that everything paid off. An excellent pass inside to Mo Walker to finish. Big Mo Walker. A chance for a three-point play. Inside the little pick and roll. That time Jordan Morgan anticipating that DeAndre Matthew was going to come out. Committed too soon. Now that's a heads-up play by Mo Walker to read that slip to get inside. First have gotten to within four. Would be a huge skin on the wall if Minnesota could get it. Life on the ball is not easy. Michigan a win. They assure themselves of at least a portion of the regular season title. Oh, the Burt had a lip out. And we've got a tie-up possession arrow that keeps it with Michigan. Well, Michigan understands. I'm sure Coach Beeline talked about this. 
This Michigan team, not this team in particular, but back in 08-09, was in the same position where they needed to get a win to keep their NCAA hopes alive. So they know that this Minnesota team is going to scrap, claw, try to do everything they can to win this game. And Michigan is ha has to respond as to the like that this game is going down to one or two possessions. Stauskas turns the corner. Got a timeout on the floor. Spike Albrecht, all of 5'11. A wonderful hand eye coordination. Michigan up by four. 56 52, Michigan on top of Minnesota. Three and a half minutes left to play. Alongside Jim Jackson, I'm Eric Collins. Here's our Duluth trading. Hardest working player, Spike Albrecht. Just an incredibly athletic play to save the ball and tip it over to Jordan Morgan. Well, how many times have you mentioned athletic and Spike Albert in the same sentence, but it's a smart play. Playing a little volleyball, keeping the ball alive, heady play. And those are the plays, the 50-50 balls coaches always talk about that you need to win the battle of. That right there keeps the momentum with Michigan. If not, think about it. Minnesota may have an opportunity, three on two, two on one break to get back. Those little things win your games, man. Also win your championships. Spike Albrecht doesn't turn the ball over, but he's not one of those little guards that just pounds it and pounds it and throws the safe pass. He'll take a chance. True point guard. Pass first, sets his teammates up. When he has the chance to take the shot, he takes it. Matthew guarded by Albrecht. And it's cleared by Stauskas. And that was excellent defense that time by forcing Matthew a little bit off balance in the lane for that shot. Dallas gets the pull up. Feathery. Well, feathery, but Austin has to understand something. When you're playing a right-hand player, as soon as you drop that left leg a little bit, you open your stance up. That gives Stauskas the advantage to drive to his right, and it's hard for you now to recover and test the shot. You have to screw him up a little bit more. Offensive foul on Walker, his fourth. Do you remember the foul earlier in the first half? Same kind of situation where Mo Walker went inside. The offensive foul with the shoulder. Consistency from the referees in that, in that um, instance, even though it's later in the game. Same kind of call, same kind of action. And there's a foul on Matthew. Albrecht will come the other way and shoot a one and one. Mike Albrecht didn't go to the free throw line all too often. He'll shoot a one and one. He shoots at a 70% clip. He's only been to the free throw line 17 times. He's 12 for 17 in 27 games. And in conference play, this Michigan team shoots an amazing 77.2%. That's a, I mean, that's a, off the charts. Okay, for team free throw shooting, which is what you want, because now pretty much everybody on the court, maybe other than Morgan, is a threat in regards to knocking down shots. And a foul on Eliason. Count the second free throw, and now more free throws for Michigan. Well, you think about it. Minnesota's hurting themselves. The offensive foul down low by Walker. The foul out of bounds that time on Spike Alden. Okay. Now, after the made free throw, another self-inflicting wound by Minnesota. You're giving points to Michigan. Just watch right here. And that's a push. It, you may not like it, but by extending the elbow by Eliason, caused by the off-balance of Morgan, it's an easy call for the referee. Two big men for the Gophers in foul trouble. Eliason with three fouls. Walker with four. Two and a half minutes to play. Lead is back up to nine. Off 
Justin Hollins was pushed. Stauskas going to be called for riding Hollins. Still in the bonus, so one and one for Austin Hollins. Here's our auto owner's insurance game with man at the free throw line leading the way for the Gophers. 12 of his 14 points coming in the second half. Nick Stauskas, I'd say a relatively quiet 21 points. But he hasn't forced the issue. And a lot of times with the leading scorer who may not be, and those points are good. And a lot of guys will force some issues, but Nick has been calculated in his attack. When he had a chance to come off a pick and roll to shoot it, he shoots it. If not, he makes a play. But that's part of the maturation, the maturity process you see from Nick Stauskas being in this leadership role. He can shoot whenever he wants. But now he understands the value of shot selection, time, and score, which has voted well for his team. Pressure in the backcourt. Wolverines break it. Levert has bugs on him. Shot blocked out of 10. Stouts gets against Andre Hollins. Crosses him over. Thighs burning for Minnesota. They've been defending for close to 45 seconds. Ryzen has to put a body on Morgan. Too much space in between, kind of watching the shot in the air. Lost side of Morgan, giving up the offensive rebound. Michigan ball. John Beeline knows he's got a special player in Spike Albrecht. We saw it last year in the national championship game. Albrecht is not afraid of a big shot. Well, this time DeAndre Matthew just got lost, okay? Just got lost. And I talked about Minnesota beating themselves. Here's a situation you have dribble drive penetration. You know you have shooters on the perimeter but you get caught inside. So if you track it back a little bit to this run and how Michigan spread it out, a lot of it has been helped out by the mental errors of Minnesota. 10-2 run in the last three minutes and 30 seconds. Knowing how to win a game close, knowing how to eliminate those mental mistakes, that's the toughest burden to overcome for team, in particular when you haven't been together for a while, and that's something that this Minnesota team, in particular on the road here, has fought with. And that's why they haven't been able to be as successful when they've been in a lot of games. Yeah, well, Minnesota, they're going to have a long time to think about what might have been. They don't have a midweek game. So the next time we'll see them in action will be on Sunday at Williams Arena against Penn State. That'll be their final regular season game of the season. And then they'll have to play the Big Ten tournament and then wait to see what happens with their postseason fate. Now the journey, Big Ten Basketball 2014, special episode with Derek Walt, the uh, highly ballyhooed freshman for Michigan. He'll be involved. Iowa's head coach, Fran McCaffrey, and John Mellencamp, who's a big Indiana Hoosier fan. They'll all be featured in the new episode tonight, immediately following our game right here on BTN. We've got exactly one minute left to play. And it is exactly a 10-point lead for Michigan. Here at winning time, last three minutes, they've gone on the 10-2 run. Good teams figure out ways to win. They figure out ways to capitalize off their opponent's mistakes. And a lot of it's been very good shot selection by Michigan, but also when they've missed, you see Jordan Morgan working his way down below getting off his rebound. Saw this in the game against Purdue. Derek Walton gets the start. Spike Albrecht finishes the game. Well, how about it? But you know what? And that's not a slight of Derek Walton. I think it's more so a really good indication of the trust factor that they have in Spike Albrecht to finish the game. But also, too, think about it. He wasn't finishing games for the better part of the season. 
So again, mentally for him, he has to stay engaged to know when his number is called. So now he's done that and he's finished these games off for Michigan in, in a very important way. Gopher still with a pulse. But then he buckets. Matthew gets two. Let's see if they should Minnesota sort of try to force Michigan to catch the ball in the corner so they can get a quick trap. And Levert is fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. That's the 10th team foul on Minnesota. So we reach the double bonus. Two free throws for Karis Levert. And with the current team on the floor, you basically have Jordan Morgan in the backcourt. So it's not a matter of who can't we foul? I mean, who can we foul? Because everyone other than Morgan shoots pretty good. I mean, that's him from the free throw. So advantage Michigan from, and that's why shooting free throws is so important, making free throws. Late game situation, that can win you a game. That can allow a team back in the game it, it, when you're not making it. Something. Austin Holland. It's about as good as what you're going to get in these circumstances. And Stouts is able to clear it. I don't want to call this guy, but. Well, it looks like Minnesota's going to call off the dog. Golfers gave it a good run, cut it to within two with four minutes left. But at the end, just too much Spike Albrecht, too much Nick Stauskas, and too much 16th ranked team in the country. Michigan, with this win, they have guaranteed themselves at least a share of the Big Ten regular season crown. And it's technically a shot clock violation. We still need to play .9. It is in the books. Congratulations to John Beeline and the Michigan Wolverines with the win. At least a share of the Big Ten regular season title is there. They still have two more regular season games to play at Illinois on Tuesday. And home versus Indiana next Saturday. They control their fate. A win in Champaign or a win at home against the Hoosiers. And Michigan will have their first outright Big Ten regular season title since 1986. Surprising how long it's been since the last outright Big Ten regular season title for the Wolverines. The happy head coach, John Beeline, standing by with Jim Jackson. Thanks a lot, Eric. Coach, we were just talking about how each team had effort, but yeah. Spike Albrecht down the stretch of a game. 10-2 run in the last three minutes and 30 seconds. What does that say about this team? Well, it was really good. This is the way I love the way we get, we made that run. It wasn't pretty. It, went with the, it was all about just making gutty plays. Jordan Morgan, Spike Albrecht, just getting second possessions. Uh, huge for us, and we rebounded well as well, Jimmy. So I can't say enough about our effort because Minnesota's got a good team, and, and I, I think they're an NCAA tournament team. They're really good. Thank goodness we can hold on today. Two games left in the conference season. Michigan State loses again. Your team, you, all, you, you talked about it all year, we're still young. They're going to hear a lot, pats on the back, Big Ten champion, regular season. How do you guard against that so your team just finishes out strong? Well, you know, we've had some of these moments this year. We've had great road wins where everybody was patting us on the back. We're pretty, we've been pretty good at that most of the part, most of the way. Now we just got to really go after it because an, an outright championship is sitting right there. So we just got to go and do whatever we can to win, these, win this next game. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Right, thanks, Jimmy. Back to you, Eric. Thanks, Jimmy. Terrific job. And once again, congratulations. Tremendous performance by Michigan. Basketball on BTN is presented by Five Hour Energy. Focus is the feeling of clarity and alertness. It's the feeling you get from Five Hour Energy. It's also brought to you by State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. And by Case IH. Visit caseih.com slash agronomic design. That's going to do it. 
historic night here at the Chrysler Center. Nick Stauskas and Michigan, they have done it. At least a portion of the Big Ten regular season title. For Jim Jackson, I'm Eric Collins saying so long for Ann Arbor. Now let's go back to our Chicago studio and Dave Repson.